All right, guys. <laughs> Let's see how this plays out. First and foremost, Leon Dreisaitl at 29 years old wants a six-year deal at 12 million per with a no-movement clause. We'd be committing to Dreisaitl for the rest of his career. Elias Pedersen at 26 years old wants a six-year deal at 12 and a half. We go for Pedersen over Dreisaitl because of the age difference. I mean, clearly, if we only go after one, we go for Pedersen over Dreisaitl. No doubt. Rich, what's going on, buddy? Defensively, it's between Makar and Theodore. Makar wants $8 million for six years with a no-movement clause at 26. Shea Theodore, at 29, wants $8 million for five years with a no-movement clause. It's clear. We go after Pedersen and Makar. No doubt about it. We go after Pedersen and Makar. And we pay them a little bit extra to get those deals done. Before we do that, who do we have for goaltending free agents? Lukas Dostal, Ottinger. Go figure, we could get him back after all this time. Okay, so three stars are the best options that we have. So clearly, if we were to go after a goaltender, it would be Dostal and Ottinger. Ottinger, who's been playing in Pittsburgh, wants 4.5 for three years. Dostal wants 5.8 for three years. So if we go after a goaltender, we try to bring Ottinger back to Seattle. That is clear. Defensively, again, Kale McCarr is our guy. No doubt about it. Prospect-wise, there isn't anybody that's incredible. So it's clear that we just go after Kale McCarr above all. Furman, that was fantastic. And then forward-wise, obviously, we go after Pedersen. Although, in terms of potential, there is this 21-year-old here named Caleb Smith. Half-star, but four-star potential. We're going to go for him right now. So let's see if uh, we can sign one Caleb Smith. I did see Darlene. There's also uh, a couple three and a half star guys here that we should probably go for three stars I'm not as worried about uh, but there is Charlie Glob another Erie Otters player we still have Lunacharsky Lunacharsky's still on our team yeah he's still there we're good that might have been a different one maybe so we're gonna also go for Charlie Glob here Try to sign this dude. Let's go for the guys with potential. I gotta re sort oh, this back now you. to just forwards. Disco 92. Made me think of discos too. Thank you for the follow. Uh, we'll also go after Xavier Borgo and Matthew Poitras for three and a half star guys. Xavier wants, ooh, 2.2 for five years. I'll think about that. And Poitras wants one point. Okay. We'll think about those two. Elias Patterson. Let's get this deal done. I will meet his demand. This will bring him to age 32. We'll give him the extra security of a seventh year. He will be our franchise player. I will give him the full no movement clause. He want I say we go up to 13. I say we go up to 13 million a season even. We got to flex a little bit of financial muscle here to make sure we get this guy. And 13 might not even be enough, but we're going to go 13 million a season for Pedersen. No movement. It's, it's got to happen. Because again, 26 years old, prime of his career. You're just not going to get that anywhere else. He is unbelievable. Obviously. He turned into what you would expect Pedersen to turn into. We got to go for it. No doubt. And he'd be playing with Patrick Laine. That leaves us with 22 million left. Next up, clearly, it's Kale McCarr. 
that we also prioritize. Again, 26 years old, four star, incredible. Incredible skating, incredible offensive defenseman, all things considered. We clearly go for Kale McCarr and perhaps overpay to get him as well. Uh, he wants eight by six. Did we go to nine or eight, seven, five? I think we just avoid screwing around and we pay him nine mil. It's a tough call, but it would be our leader on defense. I think again, I'd look for that extra deal. Seven years at nine mil for Kale McCarr to lock him down. It's been very tough to develop defensemen. We need a number one defenseman. He would be a number one defenseman. We're gonna go for it. That leaves us with 13 million left. Which means we're out on Dreisaitl and we're out on Shea Theodore. Because we need to save some money here. Which means we could go for Ottinger and goal. Which I think is a pretty smart move. And we probably should. We need a goaltender of his caliber. And then we could go for some of the lesser forwards or defensemen if we wanted to. But we are going to go for one Jake Ottinger now that he's been developed elsewhere. Um, to be honest, I mean, it's a little bit tough. Just to say... We're going to bump it up to $5 million even. That's about the most I'm willing to spend on a goaltender, I think. It's a, it's a pretty big risk, but... I mean, we got a three-star goalie. It's a solid starter in this league. A little bit more reliable than who we have. I think we go for it. And hopefully, if he signs us, we avoid the no trade. So that brings us down to eight mil. Off of three gigantic contracts. Again, someone like Darlene, uh, Wierenski, even Adam Fox. These guys are going to be asking for probably a boatload of money. Yeah, Adam Fox wants six mil. We need to wait to see first what happens with these big names. So that is what we're going to do. Even the likes of uh, Borgo will avoid for the moment. We had OEL on this team before, actually. We ended up uh, getting rid of him for picks. Shea Theodore has gone to the Vancouver Canucks. Yes! Seven years! 13 million per! We steal Elias Pettersson away! Yes! Holy shit, did we have to pay him a ridiculous amount of money? But Pettersson hit the market and we made no mistake. Whew! That is a. My god, an astronomical amount of money. But the deal is done. So Shea Theodore, we didn't go for it. He went to Vancouver, so we need to get Kale McCarr. Golob hasn't signed. <laughs> Pedersen, McCarr, to the Kraken. Cup, window, open. Cup, window, open. <laughs> oh, we didn't miss this year. We weaponized that cap space. Nine million for the next seven years. We're paying for it. But Pedersen and McCarr have joined the Seattle Kraken. Jake Ottinger signs as well. Three targets, three signings, and a Stanley Cup that's coming to Seattle sooner rather than later. Oh my god. And we might still get some of the younger guys like Charlie Galob, Caleb Smith. Incredible. Incredible. I want no national team offers, although managing the Israeli under-18 team would be pretty fun. Oh. <laughs> oh, having Pedersen, Makar, and Line leading this team with the young talent we have. We are going to have some cap trouble in the future, but we don't have it right now. Let's go. To say the least, let's go. And right now, 
I want to send, like, all of our younger dudes, like, immediately. I want to send, like, everybody to the pigeons. Like, automatically. Even Ottinger. If it's going to let me send you to the AHL, I'm going to do it. That just means you're not sitting on my roster and you might technically be involved in that training camp deal. Whatever. If it's a morale thing, they'll bounce back. But it's not saying that I'm risking losing anybody to waivers by doing this. So I don't care. Okay, so Kale McCarr I can't send down, but that's fine. He doesn't need to get better. Uh, Trevor Zegra will send you down. Ratu will send you down. And hopefully this does indeed pay uh, big dividends here by letting all these guys take part in that extra training camp and get that extra crazy bit of development. That would be great. William Carlson. Uh, even William Carlson agreed to go down. Pedersen? Yeah, Pedersen's not going to do it. Well, he literally can't. So Pelletier, we're just going to send everybody down here because it doesn't matter. Except for our big three of Pedersen, Line, and Makar. Incredible. That leaves us with... I mean, apparently 29 million in cap space, obviously. Uh, it's tough to say how much money we actually have right now. I think it was about, what, 9 million? Obviously, we're not going to sign Leon Dreisaitl with $9 million. Um, defensively, we're set. We don't really need anybody defensively. We could use like a minor improvement, like a true like three-star defenseman. But we don't really need anybody defensively. I certainly don't think we need anybody offensively. I don't think there's any reason with how young our talent pool is here to spend money. I think we just keep that $9 million there. Like, yeah, it'd be great to get Dreisaitl, Svechnikov, but it's like, man, that's not going to happen. Svech wants seven. It's just not going to happen. Like, even bringing in Brock Besser, he wants eight. We can't afford to bring in people for that much money. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and go to the lottery. Uh, we'll see if any of these guys hang around on the free agent list and have that asking price drop. But for now, I think we're good, even for uh, some of the other dudes. So let's just move on. We'll see what big deals go on around the league. But right now, the, the big thing here is let's just go ahead and get to this lottery, get through this draft. I mean, we've... I never imagined we would have ended up with uh, Pedersen and Makar in the same foul swoop there, but there it was. Adam Fox goes to Dallas, Brock Besser to Detroit, and Moritz Sider has been traded for Tristan Jari. So some big deals here across the league. Four lottery picks, by the way, in waiting. Four. We have five first-rounders. Xavier Borgo goes to Buffalo. And it is just about time to find out how this is going to go. Leon Dreisaitl to Chicago. Six years, $71 million. And we did sign Caleb Smith. Dreisaitl to Chicago. Uh, we signed Charlie Golob. Andre Svechnikov goes to Pittsburgh. And Vladimir Tarasenko was traded again, this time for goaltender Lukas Parich. We go to the lottery. Again, we have Detroit's pick, our own pick, Los Angeles, and Montreal. The 16th pick in the draft, will it stay with Vancouver? Yes, it will. The 15th pick, will it stay with Arizona? Yes, it will. Here's our first chance chat. Will the 14th pick stay with Detroit? Yes, so we don't move up on that attempt. We do have the 14th overall pick. 13, will Toronto move up? No. Will the Rangers move up at 12? No. Will the Sabres move up at 11? No. Will the Kraken move up at 10? No. So we have the 14th pick. We have the 10th pick. Two chances left with LA and Montreal. Carolina, will they stay at 9? Yes. Florida, will they stay at 8? Yes. Our last two chances to move up. Will we stay at seven with LA? 
Yes, we will. So it's 14, 10, and 7. Montreal is our last chance to move up. Will they stay at 6? 6, 7, 10, and 14. Four picks and we didn't move up once. <laughs> Fifth, San Jose has moved up. Fourth, Nashville has moved up. They move up to third. Chicago maintains the number one pick after requiring Leon Dreisaitl. So we didn't move up at all. But that is incredibly rough. We still have four picks. But man, we didn't get one lot of, man, we didn't get one move up there into the top three. That is harsh. Very, very harsh. So with that chat, we go to the draft. It is time. Again, we have our target. The mock draft has Norman at one. It has Howard falling to eighth, which would be great. I wouldn't have to trade up to get him. I really do want Howard. That guy's gonna be something special. However, I know certain members of the chat won't let me not do it. We look at the New York Rangers and the $11 million contract of Alexi Lafreniere, who we cannot afford. Uh, unless William Carlson wanted to go, which he doesn't. I would have to give up Marco Rossi and Pelletier on top of three first-rounders. They are not moving Lafreniere. So that deal is dead. So. Are we trading up to get Howard? He's the best player in this draft. I think we have to. Let's talk to Chicago and see if they're willing to deal. If they are, perfect. If not, we'll figure it out. three-star players that we have the rights to. We do have some star and a halves here. So Tanner Dickinson at 23 has fallen a bit. He is NHL caliber. There is also a Vasovalod Guidemac who's not that bad, but I think we could look to move on from him as well to pull this off. Rich, thank you. I gotta be careful with the Blackberry, you're right. From there, we have our pick. Calgary, they're not going to do it. I don't think we're going to be able to trade up here. Teams just aren't going to want to risk it. So with the number one overall pick, will Chicago select Brad Norman? They took Norm Howard. We tried. Chicago takes the player who we knew was the best in this draft. He was projected to go eighth, but Chicago had the same intel. So Chicago picks up this dude and Dreisaitl. Damn. I mean, he's incredibly well-rounded. Five-star potential as well. Best stats, puck handling. I mean, AC, everybody knew he was great, though. The consensus was there. He's already a third liner. Crazy. So Norm Howard's off the board. Second, it has San Jose selecting Shane Scott. Will that be the case? No, they take a different defenseman in Roman Konkoff, who was projected to go to us 10th overall. So Konkoff, the consensus, four-star, four-star. 16 points of 50 games in the KHL as an 18-year-old. <laughs> Holy sh my god. Like, he is an elite defensive defenseman already. Like, he doesn't really hit, but 18 positioning, 20 defensive read. They literally just drafted the Russian Lidstrom. Holy crap. <laughs> like, they just drafted the Russian Lidstrom. He needs to improve on his skating, but defensively, my god. What a pick there for San Jose. Third overall, it's Nashville. Will they select Isaacson for the record? Again, Konkov projected to go 10th. Would have been nice. Nashville select Shane Scott, who was projected to go second from the Seattle T-Birds. Uh, our scouts say he's not as good as the consensus, and he's not. He's okay. Good determination, professionalism, good shooting range, shot blocking, stick checking. He's solid. Nothing too crazy there. Fourth overall, Pittsburgh. Will they select Albini? 
They will not. They take Morgan Kindrachuk, who was, or Kindrachuk perhaps, who was project, oh, Pittsburgh. Oh, Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh? Did I miss him? Pittsburgh. Oh no, Pittsburgh. Pit Pittsburgh. Pitts, Pittsburgh. Projected to go 71st to the LA Kings. Pittsburgh takes Morgan Kendrachuk. Fourth overall. Some injury concerns. He is better than what the consensus had him as. He had 25 points in 33 games for Minnesota Duluth, which is great. I wouldn't have taken a fourth overall. Jesus Christ, he's got a long way to go. He's got a long way to go. Whew. Good luck. Fifth overall, Winnipeg. Will you select a Drew Goodale? You will not. You take Brett Wally from the Barry Colts. Projected to go, oh, Winnipeg. 18th overall. Four and a half star consensus. Our scouts have him at a three and a half. 40 points in 45 games for the Colts. Jesus. Well, I think by default we're in line to have a pretty goddamn good draft, don't you think? If that dude is going fifth, sixth overall, the Seattle Kraken are on the clock. And while he might not have the highest potential, there aren't really a ton of players that do have incredibly high potential. I think we have to look at Brad Norman. Here's my issue right now. We have all these first round picks, but we've already spent a lot of money. Brad Norman has some big injury concerns. But he's one hell of an offensive player. One hell of an offensive player, really good skater. I think we have to risk it for this guy. The passing is outrageous. I think we have to go for it. Or we could look elsewhere at trading down. We certainly don't have to make all five picks. Um, the, one of the better things we could do, I would say, is look at already established prospects like Chaz Lucius. Like that might be our best bet, but there might be somebody that we want to take the risk on here. Question is, who the hell would he go for? I mean, for example, I mean, five-star prospect right there in Phoenix. He's already making three million. They also have another uh, five-star prospect, a 19-year-old. I mean, right now, if you look at it, uh, we have the next two picks. So we could easily trade this one and take Norman with the next. Or we could trade down for a first-rounder next year. Jets don't have any five-star prospects we could steal. Neither do the Caps, unless it didn't sort, which it looks like it doesn't sort automatically. Now the Caps don't have anybody. Vegas doesn't. Shane Wright is 21 years old, making three million. I mean, we could try to get Shane Wright away from Vancouver, but call it a hunch. I don't think they're gonna budge. I don't think they're gonna budge. Also, as well, uh, I would have to give up somebody to help make that happen. Let's just say it's this new guy that we just signed at Smith. See, I don't think we're going to be able to really trade these draft picks to get the type of talent that we're looking for, though. I just don't see that as happening. We might as well either just trade down or take our risks. I think we just take our risks in the draft or trade down to next year. The problem is we don't even really have to worry about trading down to next year. Next year's draft, we have our first. We already have fucking five second rounders I think we just shoot our shot here I feel like it's fairly obvious though we're taking Brad Norman 
And man, Christian Isaacson, who was also projected to go early, might be worth the shot. He's already got pretty good passing and a good offensive read. And then there's these other dudes here as well, this defenseman, Dennis Loganoff. I think we can just risk it here. I think we could just risk it. This is goalie as well in Klingberg. I think we just go for it. I mean, we're going to have to trade picks eventually because, my God, we're going to end up with a thousand players otherwise. I just don't see who we can really go out and get right now. Like, we can't get a five-star prospect. That's just not going to happen. So, I mean, we could look for a four-and-a-half star. Or we could take somebody who might just turn into something without having to give up anybody. So, I mean, the Ducks right now, again, if five-star players are off the books, four-and-a-half star Chaz Lucius. How easy is it going to be to acquire somebody of your talent level? So we can get Chaz Lucius at a four and a half star. Okay. He's got one year left on his ELC. So four and a half star looks to be possible. Are we sure five star is impossible? This dude Schmidt. He has an AD. I don't really like that. Lucius also had an AD deal, but he's already three star. Femus is already making three million. Four and a half star, LaSalle and Eichel. No, obviously we're not going to be able to get Jack Eichel. LaSalle could be interesting, though. Uh, Ostland's available. Brant Clark is a four star. Yeah, Carvalis, a defenseman, but he's already 21. Does have an AC. Dreisaitl, Brad Lamberts. So, like, the problem with... Uh, Wright and Lambert is that they're already good. I wanted to see if there were any five-star dudes who haven't really developed yet. Solomon Sim would be incredible. Not to mention Wallstad. If I could get someone like Solomon Sim, I think it's worth it. Otherwise, we're going to have to look at four and a half star as like the best we can get in a trade, which might be the case. I can't get Solomon Sim, though. Five stars are out of reach. So we got the choice of make picks. Or try to make deals for four and a half star prospects. Well, Donna, just because he's injury prone doesn't mean he's necessarily going to miss the time, though. So, I mean, again, you look at four and a half star guys. Obviously, like Shifley, we're rolling out. Uh, we'd be looking at the likes of Seamus Casey. Schmidt, who just won... The con Smythe, for God's sakes. It'd be tough to not pick him. You got Simon Nemich as well. Who's got two years left. And Shane Wright's beyond reach. Quinn Hughes is too expensive. Um, can I add... I was going to say, can I add these guys to like a watch list? Um, can I get Schmidt? For example, three-star player already. Obviously, the easier thing to do is to just accept the trade or uh, to just make the picks and not even worry about the trade. I mean, we can get somebody of this caliber at three and a half star. It's just four stars a little bit too, too far gone. I think we trade these picks now. I mean, again, I, I like Norman. There's some talent there, but we got to make that call of do we think Norman would develop or do we just make the trade for someone who we know on paper is already better? I think we just gotta make the trades. If we can get a four and a half star talent with the draft picks we have, that's too good to pass up. So we have to take a quick look here. Allow me to open up the old WordPad document here. We gotta make these trades. So the big thing here again, four and a half star is the target. Uh, Anaheim, we have Lucius, who is... Uh, a three-star player right now as a forward. The problem is we really don't need forwards. I'd prefer to get defensemen. So let's see, we have one, two, three. Yeah, really right now, more than anything, we need defensemen. But I mean, I guess if we can get a forward anyway, it makes sense. So we'll keep Lucius in mind. It's not to mention the uh, draft rights, which I'll check afterwards. Right now we have Lucius. 
He's a three-star option. Arizona. I actually didn't check to see if uh, Femius or Schmidt were out of the uh, question here. I actually didn't check. Oh shit, we could get Pano Femius. We can get a five-star player here. We can pull this off. They just gotta be low rated enough. They just have to be low rated enough, but we can pull this off to get a five-star player. Tremendous. So again, Anaheim didn't have any five-star players. Arizona has two. Femius is a uh, two and a half star already. And then they also have uh, Schmidt. Richard Head, you, yeah, you go for it, buddy. I will try to help you find success. So, Femus and Schmidt are the best two options right now. Furman, I'm not against trading for guys who are ready now. I mean, obviously, I want to find like the perfect mix. Like, Femus is the perfect guy. Like, he can get into the lineup now. And he's got that uh, potential. Right now, I want five star options. I think Oslin at three star might be out of reach. Let's see if three stars are generally uh, out of reach here. It's this dude that we want to add is Oslund. Oslin's out of reach. Okay, so we have that clarification at least. That someone who is three stars, five star potential, is basically out of reach. So we're gonna look for a two and a half star uh, level, like Brad Lambert, should be available on Chicago. So Lambert or Fimis right now. Again, ideally we'd find a defenseman though. We want we want five star here. We want the best that we can get. Or cooking with someone else advertising wine appreciation style. I mean so many options. Only one Richard. Rich, how good of a cook are you? Although cooking well, are you ever gonna cook with somebody else? That's the real question. Is that gonna be a scenario? Wine appreciation, I might feel for your liver. Advertising, you're already tremendous at advertising. <sighs> sales, you're already a hell of a salesman. Negotiating, a hell of a negotiator. I don't think we have to worry about sex and communication. You already have style, we've seen the sunglasses. I'm gonna say cooking with somebody else, like that has to be it, right? So right now, Solomon sends our guy or Wallstead. These two are the guys. Solomonson is a defenseman, which is what we're looking for. Wallstead as well is, you know, spectacular. Dallas don't have what we want. Detroit has Mukanoff. He's not what we want though. Connor McDavid's not going to happen. Savoy and Spencer Knight not going to happen. Honestly, Spencer Knight might happen. Though. Dunno, take it easy, man. We'll catch you later. I wonder if Spencer Knight could happen. He's making pennies for the foreseeable future. Uh, Edvinson or Quentin Byfield. Quentin Byfield's already making a decent amount of money. But Edvinson on LA here. This could be the time that we figure out our defense by just pillaging the other teams. We also have Finley at a two and a half star. Man, Vasilevsky in, in freaking Minnesota, of course. Um, you have Finley in Minnesota. Again, I want five star players that we can actually afford to get. Uh, Mirosh Nachenko in Nashville. But again, right now, I, I'm thinking we need defense more than forwards. New Jersey, Holtz and Meechkoff are out of reach. The Islanders, Barkoff's out of reach. 
Lafreniere's not going to happen. Kata Hat's not going to happen. Uh, Emilia Arventi, we got better options. Yaroslav Askarov is 23 and never really made it. Wow. Got all in the felt, Braden Point. Okay, I think we have our targets here. I really like the idea of Solomonson on Columbus and Edvinson on LA as defensemen. I think those two need to be the big targets here. And if we look at Columbus, I like the idea a little bit more of getting Elias Solomonson here. He's still got a bit of a ways to go, but I mean, that's a dude to acquire if you can. But Askarov's generational, he sure is. So the best guy that we can use to get this deal done is Caleb Smith. And if we look at our defense, forward-wise, we're so stacked. Look at our defense, Makar, Master Domenico, Thompson, Drysdale, Addison, Beliveau. We have other defensemen we could use. Can I get this deal done for Caleb Smith? We got Rosenberg that we got to sign here too. Two stars. There's a star and a half, three and a half star prospect here in Dean. I think we could give up on Zach Dean. I don't think uh, Solomonson's gonna happen here. If I take Dean out of it. It doesn't look like Solomonson's gonna happen. What if I take out Caleb Smith? Maybe there's just somebody else that they would want more. I don't wanna give up Omen because he's fucking, you know, pretty damn good potential. What if I were to give up Lassie Thompson? So if I give up Lassie Thompson to get his immediate replacement who has a higher potential. Still, no, I can't get Solomonson. He's too valued by Columbus. Fuck. Let's go talk to LA. Let's go talk to LA. Remove a couple of these. Are the Kings willing to make a deal here for Edvinson? He's already 22. Two star, five star. Are they willing to make a deal for Edvinson? Furman, I have never seen a well balanced offer go through. I've never seen it. Holy shit. <laughs> Alright, let's go for Solomonson again then. I legit have never seen. A well-balanced offer go through. Are you fucking kidding me? Did they adjust it? Yeah, I guess maybe because our negotiation's up there? Fuck. Alright, maybe the three-star, five-stars are available then. Fuck, I don't want to look through every goddamn team again. Only happens on draft day. Fair. All right, that makes sense then. Because I think I just gave up on ever trying it. Well, fuck it. We have to make a play for Shane right now, right? <laughs> I think we have to. Braden Point would obviously be too expensive. Not that we need Shane right, but holy shit. Would that be better than any draft pick we could get? And there was the Arventi. Could make a play for Carter Hart, but he's making 8 million bucks. Lafreniere, we couldn't even get to well balanced. He's also making way too much now. Barkov. Matvey Michkov, who's already four star. Jesus Christ. Roshnichenko was sick. Lennox. We already have Finley written down. Edvinson. Byfield. I like Edvinson more. There's Matt Savoy and Spencer Knight. You know, I still think we have to focus on the defense here. I think we do. 
I still want to go for Solomonson and Edvinson to improve this defense. So let's see if we can pull off a miracle here. We have Smith. Two first, two seconds, and Caleb Smith for Elias Solomonson. Shit. Caleb Smith and three firsts. And a fourth. Balls. And a third. Again, this guy's better than anybody we could get in this draft. Oh my god. Extortion. And a second. Caleb Smith and four first rounders. Fuck you, Columbus. Are you kidding me? If I take out Caleb Smith, there's got to be another way. There's got to be another way. Too much. I don't think it is, though, man. It's a five star prospect. It's better than anybody we can get at this stage of the draft. The only other choice is we just say fuck it and make all these draft picks right now, basically. That's the only other choice. Otherwise, it's gonna cost too much. I mean, we could get four and a half star guys, but why not go out and get the dudes that we know can make an impact here? You know, we have the forward depth here to give up a Caleb Smith, a Zach Dean to pull this off. What if I use Zach Dean? And what if I also use Caleb Smith? Maybe they'd be more enticed to do this if we have players instead of just picks. I can't get him. Road two four and a half star guys and a five star guy. I mean, fair. That's what we're gonna have to do. I mean, we know we could get a five-star forward prospect, but the problem is, like, we really wanted defensive prospects, but you can argue, get forward prospects, turn them into defensive prospects. I'm going to talk to LA again, because we know that we could get a deal done for Edvinson. We were already there. We know we can get a deal done for this guy. So let's add Smith. And again, for four-and-a-half-star potential... At star and a half, let's add Zach Dean. First rounder gets it to well balanced. Second rounder doesn't get it there. What about a second and a fourth? Can I absolutely fleece the Kings here for Edvinson? That was the hope. Doesn't look like it, but if I could get away with this deal without having to use a first round pick, that would be incredible. Okay, we gotta use at least one. Done deal. We got him. Actually, a third rounder would go through. They just really want the first. How cheap can I go with this offer now? The thing they really want is that first rounder. A first, two fourths, Zach Dean and Caleb Smith for Simon Edvinson. Done deal. We get one of our top defensive prospects, one of the top defensive prospects out there right now. 22 years old, two star, five star. Again, he's got some development to go. But if he and Kale McCarr can lead this team into the future, we are set. And we still have someone like Mastral, uh, Michael Master Domenico in the system as well. The big question now is whether or not I target a goalie. I mean, I have Ottinger, but there's Wallstead and there's Spencer Knight. Spencer Knight, at this stage... Two years at 1.2 million, three star, five star. Wallstead on his ELC, two and a half star, five star. Three years of Wallstead, who they might be trying to get rid of because they have Hellebuck. 
I think we go for Wallstead overnight, maybe. Two and a half star. Yeah, he's two years younger, only a half star worse. More term. Can we lock down Jesper Wallstead from Columbus? Because we also have to worry about cost. These two star players here. Uh, Brennan Offman, solid prospect, but we he's expendable now. As is Wyatt Johnston. They will never accept. Okay, so they don't want to move. They don't want to move Wallstead. So if we want to look for a potential long-term improvement over Ottinger, we look at Spencer Knight. Fine by me. And again, two and a half star, Brennan Othman, Wyatt Johnston. And can we get it to well balanced relatively easily? Can we get this done without using a first rounder? Done deal. Let's fucking go. Brennan Hoffman, Wyatt Johnston, two seconds, and at least a third. All right, it's going to be three seconds and two good prospects, but we're going to pick up Spencer Knight and have ourselves a goalie for the future. Spencer Knight's our guy. Done deal. Done deal so from there the only five star players we can look at are forwards unless we wanted to go for four and a half stars but i think we just go for the five stars while we have the arsenal to do it the one big guy to look at here on vancouver is shane wright i don't see any way that they possibly move him or that we possibly have the ability to get the deal done but for shits and gigs Let's see what we got. I can use Lassie Thompson. Yeah, they don't want to move Shane Wright. Okay, so Shane Wright's out. So we have on Nashville, it is Marash Nachenko, who is two star at 21. Minnesota has Finley, two and a half star at 20. So right now it's Finley, two and a half star at 20. Florida has Savoy at 3-star, 21. Chicago has Lambert, 2.5-star, 21. And then Arizona has Femis, 2.5-star. Okay, so clearly, we go for Matthew Savoy first. Don't know if we'd be able to pull this off, but clearly he's the one to go for. I have no problem using Lassie Thompson in this trade. I have... No problem using somebody like Galab in this trade. Patrick Thomas. Just try and get the value up there. A second rounder. Two second rounders. I mean, if we can pull this off. What about a first? Two firsts. Take out Thomas. Add in a second. Lassie Thompson, Charlie Galab, two first and a second. We are acquiring Matthew Savoy from the Florida Panthers. Done deal. We still have two first rounders left. In this offseason, we have added Kale McCarr, Simon Edvinson, oh, Elias Pedersen, Matthew. Savoy, Mr. NHL, thank you for the follow. And it is still our pick in the draft. We could still draft Brad Norman. Shall we go and try to get one more player, though? <laughs> I really liked uh, Finley on Minnesota. I really liked Finley on Minnesota. Win Finley. If we can pull off this deal, then my God. So out of the three stars, Patrick Thomas. God, we got a lot of three star players here. No real three and a halfs that I want to give up on though. What about the players that we have the rights to? Again, Omen's a beast. No thanks, I don't want to give up on him. Uh, we do have the likes of Guidamac and Dickinson, who aren't all that valuable, but we can give it a shot. We'll use the Detroit pick because Montreal's is higher in a second. 
Let's take out Dickinson. Add in a third. Take out the third. Add in a second. So close. Let's take out Guy to Mac. Add in a third. All right, I don't know if I can get this deal done. Although we do have, that's right, we do have Ottinger that we can give up now that we just signed. We'd be below the cap floor, so I'd have to take on some salary. Which is ridiculous that I have to be cap compliant right now, it's the off season. We could take on JG Pajo, who just used his no trade clause to not come here. Idiot. Um, can I just like retain on Ottinger? That would suck. I would apparently be below the cap floor, which is the dumbest thing I've ever seen. Um, Matt Dumba? Problem is Dumba's gonna like offset. So Patrick Thomas, Jake Ottinger, a first and two seconds for Quinn Finley and Matt Dumba, who's on an expiring deal. No. Shit. I don't think we can pull this one off. I don't think we can pull this one off with Minnesota, which is fine. It's it's just Minnesota doesn't work. Uh, let's go to Nashville and talk about Marash Nachenko. It was a little bit worse, but not by much. A little bit worse, but not by much. Add Ottinger back to the deal. Hardly likely that they'll accept is not what I wanted to see. And let's add in Patrick Thomas. And then for Nashville here. I just don't think I'm going to be able to move Ottinger right now. Uh, they have a fan of Saya, but obviously he's younger. They're not going to want to get rid of him. What if I use Sissons? So yeah, salary-wise, I just can't make the move involving Ottinger. But I might just be able to get Marashnichenko no matter what, and hopefully without using that first rounder. Damn. Alright, what if I were to use someone other than Patrick Thomas, though? I mean, it is a five-star player we're talking about here. I don't necessarily want to give up on Jamie Drysdale, but he's kind of peaked. I could maybe give up Pelletier? I could give up Pelletier. Who is three star, three and a half star at 24. He's making 2.6 mil. Give up Pelletier to get this dude. I'd be below. Damn it. Yeah, I can't shed any salary. God, all these guys are ready. I could give up Omen. Who's 19 and got a long way to go. Basically give up Omen. Tobias Omen to get somebody who's better and more developed. I think that's the play. Come on now. We've been streaming for so much longer than I wanted. And I wanted to. We'll use the first rounder here. We still have so many goddamn draft picks in this draft, too. Oh my god, this is extortion. Really? Done deal. It's it's a lot. It is a lot. But we know this draft is weak. We give up a second rounder next year from Winnipeg as well. And we give up Tobias Omen. But, we get Ivan Moroshnichenko, and we're going to do it. That is another five-star prospect added to the list. Ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous what we have added here. 
That is probably all we can do in terms of trades. Unless I sit here and uh, upgrade the draft picks. Which would just be ridiculous at this point. We have a first. We have a shitload of thirds and fourths as well. I think at this point, and again, through that, I managed to maintain our draft pick here. I think at this point, after all that, we also select Brad Norman. And we see if this guy can live up to that potential of a number one projected draft pick, injury concerns and all. We just see what the hell happens. There are some other players I wouldn't mind getting. But Norman was the interesting one. Uh, Detective, this is Franchise Hockey Manager 7, which you can find on Steam. What do you guys think? Do we go for Norman too, just for the memes, because of how stacked we are now? I mean, I said we were going to weaponize those first. I don't know if you guys believe me to that extent. Let's do it. Brad Norman, welcome to Seattle. K4B4, thank you for the raid. How did the stream go? You're just in time to catch the end of this one. Let's do it. Let's take Brad Norman. From there, we'll go pick until human. Is there anybody left somehow? Not really. <laughs> uh, we're way into the second round here. Nikita Trepko is absolutely who we're taking. That, yep. Done deal. Done deal. That's not even a question. It is still our draft pick because, of course, we have consecutive picks. Are any of these three decent? Alex Lundin, no. No. Kind of? Tyler Daly. Let's uh let's just trade the rest of these picks. We made two draft picks. Um I don't know if you notice how many five star players we have there, but uh Yeah, we've we've done some business. We have done some business. Let's trade the rest of these picks. Uh, preferably for draft picks from next year. We'll talk to Anaheim. Uh, and of course, we'll just add in a low level dude. Uh, let's add in Guy to Mac just to get a response. It looks like we can get Anaheim's first rounder next year. Basically, we can try to rob Anaheim blind here. A first, third, and fourth. Uh, let's take out their fourth, first, and a third. Done deal. Let's make that deal with Anaheim. Trade down, get a bunch of picks for next year. And the next trade down, we will go to Pittsburgh. Because we know they have struggled. And we will also uh, use Dickinson here, who we were looking to get rid of. Uh, we won't be able to get their first rounder for next year. Or way down the road. But we can get a second rounder. Uh, way down the road. Which will be pretty nice. We can actually get a decent amount of picks. Let's do it. So it's Dickinson. Three fourths and a fifth for a ridiculous amount of picks uh, from Pittsburgh down the road here. We'll see how those play out. And then our final couple of picks here in this draft. And, uh, you know, for the hell of it, we'll talk to Anaheim again because I own basically all their picks. Can't get a third rounder for it. What about a fourth rounder way down the road? Apparently not. Fifth rounder? Just let me get rid of these picks. Thank you, Anaheim. So, there we go. Uh, we are officially out of this draft. After one of... Ender, what's up, buddy? Trust me, I'm in the stream soon. We went an hour overtime. After one of the most ridiculous draft days I've ever seen. Acquiring Simon Edvinson, two-star, five-star. Spencer Knight from Florida, three-star, five-star. Matthew Savoy from Florida, three-star, five-star. Ivan Moroshnichenko, who's a little bit weaker, but we made it happen. We gave up Toby Oman, which kind of sucks, but it is what it is. And then, of course, we get a shitload of picks for the future. 
The draft review, Buffalo, Carolina, Calgary as the top three, the Devils, Ducks, and Caps. And of course, that is according to a couple of different things. Uh, I said we were going to weaponize the cap space that we had and the draft picks that we had. And that is exactly what we just did. We have... I'm actually not even sure how much money we have here in terms of cap space. Salary obligations. I mean, we have 22 million, it's just two forwards, so it's tough to tell when we don't have people called up right now. Like I said, I still think we have about $9 million in cap space. So there might be some money to use here. Poitras is still there, huh? We can go for this dude. I'll meet the demand on that guy. We were looking at him earlier. None of the three stars I'm really worried about. Because we need to look at signing Mika Rosenberg. Alex Siernik is good enough to be signed. Dominic Peter at two and a half star. Also good enough to be signed. Oh, good for you! Lundgren at two and a half star. Melkati dropping the follow. Love to see it. Thank you, buddy. Uh, Brad Norman's good enough to be signed. Sign of Vander Kane so we can get out of that. Uh, let's see. Carl Sterner. Good enough to be signed. Macklin Celebrini is NHL caliber. That two star. Kita Trucko, not so much. Demidoff, not so much. Forrest Mark, not so much. Lonacharski, not so much. Uh, we'll advance a day to see if these guys sign. I mean, I've already streamed late. What's another fucking five minutes, I guess? Jesus. That's what happens with a game like this. You just get so caught up. So the draft evaluation for next year. Umit Erdogan is projected to be one of the most valuable dudes. Of course, we'll give our scouts plenty of time. I need to continue to see if these young guys are going to sign here. Just to get those deals done and then we can look at other free agent options. Don't crash. There we go. Uh, Celebrini signs, Norman signs, Siernik signs. Getting a decent amount of deals done there. Furman, I got you, I got you. We'll probably go. All right, a bunch of these dudes are signing their contracts, which is good. Gonna help fill out the roster. Be able to get them to the AHL. And then again, hopefully, we see that uh, that crazy amount of development. But needless to say, the system that we have here is ridiculous. And we'll be able to let some of these guys go through this training camp, and then yeah, some of them will be loaned back out uh, to their you know, international teams and such. We are showing up as having 46 contracts. So we do have a couple of three-star options. Ovi is still out there. That Temple, yeah, that Temple University degree is paying off. Uh, Vander Kane still wants five million. That's not going to happen. So we'll wait to see if those. Uh, if those prices go down, if some of those prices go down a little bit, we'll pick up some options. Kane needs it. Yeah, well, he's not going to get it from me. So, yeah, we'll see if these go through. Again, but we basically, I can't believe how uh, this has turned out. Needless to say, I am excited to see what the hell happens with this god squad of a club. It's crazy how quickly it happened, too. Get all those draft picks to just weaponize and go for it. It's crazy, man. Absolutely crazy. All right, trying to get us to August 1st here. Screw it. Get to bed by 5 a.m. if I'm lucky. <laughs> we'll get to bed by 5 a.m. if we're lucky. 
July 21st, we are almost to the Hall of Fame inductions. It'll be uh, on August 1st as well uh, that I probably take a look at what's happening. I might even just send to the beginning of the preseason so I can see what kind of crazy player development we get. We might just get to the beginning of the preseason tonight. Screw it. We're already here. And then there'll be way too much to set up in terms of the roster and starting the season sim. It doesn't help that it's cold as hell outside and I'm not looking forward to having to walk the dog before I go to bed because otherwise she'll wake me up after like three hours of sleep. And then I won't be able to get back to bed and then you definitely won't get a stream tomorrow. It's just how that works. Right about what happens in the 22nd. Indeed. I remembered. I remembered, I remembered. Damn. Damn, 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 damn. Yeah, Chris, I figured. <laughs> for the people who are on the European side of things, yeah, for this, for you, this is, it's like, oh no, this is great. <laughs> this is tremendous. All right, Cole Eiserman to New Jersey. A couple prospects being signed. A couple trades. JJ Peterker for Dominic Kubalik. And then we'll take a look more at those guys later on. So we do indeed get to August 1st. Uh, Maxim Lenacharski, a good plus two. Team player and recovering. Not bad. Roster is so sick. So here we go, the Hall of Fame induction again for those who missed it. Boris Mikhailov, Marco Tulola, Jan Latvala, Gary Suter, Roman Hammerlet, Keith Kachuk, Ray Whitney, Pat Verbeek, Teppo Newman, and Glenn Wesley, Daniel Sedin, Steve Larmer, Patrick Eliash, Bobby Smith, Doug Waite, Steve Deshane, Alexei Kovalev, and Shane Doan are on the ballot. Your first Hall of Fame inductee is Shane Doan, his first year on the ballot, and he makes it. 95 to 2016. Shane Doan, 23-year career, 1,500 games with the Yotes organization. Shane Doan. Number retired by the Coyotes. A couple of world championship medals to his credits. And again, 972 career points in the NHL. Shane Doan makes the Hockey Hall of Fame. Ducky number two is Roman Hammerlick. A 23 year career. 300 plus games for both Tampa and Montreal. Roman Hammerlick. Also had an extended stay with the Islanders. 1,300, nearly 1,400 NHL games, 600 points. Roman Hammerlick makes the Hall of Fame. Inductee number three, Gary Suter. Daniel Sedin right now, man. Gary Suter makes it. 84 to 2001. Calder Trophy in 85, 86. Won the Stanley Cup with the Calgary Flames in 89. 844 points in 1145 career games. And your final inductee is Keith Kachuk. Daniel Sedin doesn't go in with Henrik and then misses the next year. <sighs> Keith Kachuk makes it the final inductee, the former Rocket Richard winner. 1,065 points in 1,200 games. Kachuk is in. So your final four, Doan, Hammerlick, Suter, and Kachuk make it. The Hockey Hall of Fame. We got the national team allegiances as well. Uh, nothing overly interesting there, though, I would say this year. The big thing right now, free agents. I have no... When the fuck am I even going to end this stream? Evander Kane. Still wants $5 million. Colin White wants $3 million. I think we're good. Let's get to... Well, in fairness, if, if September 22nd is the big improvement on opening night, I have to have the roster set before that, right? So, Furman, what's the key here to get the most development? What's the key to that? Just so I don't sit here if I don't have to, so to speak. 
Because if it involves a shitload of roster moves, I'm just going to call it. Because, man, I need to get to bed and call people up on opening night. All right, we'll sim to opening night. But how the hell am I going to play the preseason game? Do I just go on Do Not Disturb? Because I don't have... I don't have a roster I can ice. Rich, if you want to stream, you are absolutely getting the raid. Start streaming right now, buddy. Make it happen. Make it happen. And this host is yours. Just start streaming for like three minutes so I can host you and then you can end the stream. I don't even care. Partner push for Richard Head. Partner push. I got someone in mind I'm going to host anyway. Two people. And if one of them goes offline, I just get the other one. So. Looking for that explanation from Furman, but we might be done here. Yeah, but Furman, aren't I, aren't I going to get in trouble for the preseason game? Because they're, the preseason games are before opening night. So how do I get to the dev report without being warned about the preseason games? Well, I was testing out the stream title from offline. Do you have... I do have the shout-out thing. I, I am excited for this. I'm excited for this. Nice. Good job, Rich. Good job, buddy. Good work. You did it. That's a screenshot waiting. I'll see that on Twitter later. You're gonna be fucking buried with that screenshot on your goddamn tombstone. I mean, I at least want to see if I can get that to work where we get like the super boost of prospect development here. And then we'll call it regardless. It has been a good night, even though I stream for way too fucking long. Richard, make it your Twitch banner. Rich, please make that your Twitch banner. Oh, God. I'll take a goddamn screenshot. <laughs> it is tremendous. Oh, let's see. Let's open up good old paint. Yeah, baby. Let us open up paint. Boom. And beautiful. The best exchange you ever did see. It's going straight to Twitter. It's going straight to Twitter. It's beautiful. Alright, well hopefully I can get to September 22nd here and get that ridiculous prospect boost. Otherwise I would have ended the stream already. 5D chess. Uh, Mark Stone was just traded for Kirby Doc. Holy crap. Charlie Coyle for Victor Eklund, Riley Tufty. Connor McMichael was traded to Philly. Anton Lindell traded to Florida. And then we got our, our upgrade here, our updates here. Kirby Doc for Mark Stone, huh? Kirby Doc for Mark Stone. Fair enough. It's a bad trade. I mean, at that point of Mark Stone's career, yes. Yes, it is. The development report, Lenacharski improved the blocker. Bunch of players signing with their teams. Max Jones stays. Let's get to opening night. It's September 1st, come on. I want to see ridiculous prospect development. That's what I want. Give me what I want. Because basketballs don't hold grudges. But I do. And my girlfriend probably will too because we stayed up way too goddamn late tonight. But really, that's nobody's fault but my own. So what are you going to do? Brother. Brother, brother, brother. Brother. Colin White signs with Tampa. Come on, September 7th, let's go. We're right there. Furman, I better see ridiculous prospect development, or if this is a long con from you to ruin the save file, then I respect that too. So if I do, 
So from here, I want to set up organization, but it's not going to call people up, right? Fireman, just to clarify here, because I'm way too tired. Because all we have are Makara Pedersen line. Yeah, see, it's going to stop us. Okay, so you just had the idea that it might not. The long con, indeed. Okay, so we are at the beginning of the preseason. We are good to go. This organization is stacked. Fireman, it's all good. You know what I actually wonder? Is if I were to sit here and go to a shitload of veterans and offer them a PTO, I think this could still work. I'm going to do this off stream, but I wonder if I go to like Montes Armelis, I want to offer you a training camp spot. He shows up on roster now. So I think if I just offer a shitload of veterans spots on the roster for the preseason, I have to do this right now, don't I? Uh, hold on. I have to see if this works now. I have to see. I'm not getting to bed anytime soon. I'm not getting to bed anytime soon. Let's just offer a bunch of veteran scrubs PTOs, and that way our dudes stay down, and we might be able to get this to work. So that's two defensemen, three defensemen, hey, look, Bobby Sanguinetti. Four defensemen. Blake Kessel is five defensemen. Brett Regner is six. And Mark Kundari, maybe not. Oh boy, everything's happening. Brendan Dillon will be seven. And then we need 11 forwards. Have I 5D chest an idea that Furman didn't even know was possible? So let's see, that is two. Matt Fratt and Fratt Sanity. Rejected the PTO offer. Well, fuck you. Jordan Nolan is three. Carter Box is four. Preds legend Steve Moses is five. Gustav Nyquist will be six. Jason Magna is our seventh. Have I pulled this off? Uh, Matt Laredo will be our eighth. Andrew Agazino rejects, so uh, we have Budish at nine. Tyler Randall rejects. Evander Kane didn't reject. We got uh, Evander Kane on a PTO. <laughs> oh god! All of a sudden now, a bunch of these fuckers though are rejecting this tryout. You motherfuckers! You could put on a show for a team and might end up with a contract. It won't be me. But what the hell are you thinking? Brendan Woods, are you stupid? Nope, you're smart. Travis St. Denis? You're smart, that's good. Who else do we have here? Uh, Kale Kessie, you're a smart guy, right? Cool. All right, so now, can I go to opening night? Set your captains, no problem. No problem. I can set my captains easily. Captains. Pedersen. Makar. Line. A. I am the smartest man alive. Dropping shit. It's fine. I am the smartest man alive. Please tell me this is going to work. <laughs> oh, if this is the new meta to get ridiculous player development in FHM, I am the smartest man alive. Come on. Come on. All right, Chad, you know what I'm going to do? Because my dog is losing her mind and has to pee. As this loads. As this loads. Players need to be assigned numbers. Holy fucking balls. Oh, no. No, 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 no. I'm not dealing. I'm not dealing with that message. Nope. Do not disturb. <laughs> Opening night, please. Is Seattle supposed to play next season? Yes, as in not the one that's starting tomorrow. But yes, very soon. Is Evander Kane signed with Toronto? I might not have time to do what I wanted to do. All right. 
Let's see if I can. Let's see if I can do this. Let's see if I can do this. Excellent. Fuck your numbers. Exactly. They're not even gonna stay here. Stop messaging me about the numbers. Leave me alone. About the numbers. Just get to opening night. I'm gonna put on pants. <laughs> but not before I put on long socks that I'm tucking into these pajama pants I've totally been wearing. Why? Because they're comfy, chat. And the key thing you're gonna learn about streaming, if you ever do it, wear comfy shit, or your own merch if you're a sellout, or actually make money off of your own merch. Hi, I'm Dog. how are you? Oh, thanks for the paw to the balls. That's, that's great. It's okay. Oh, another one, okay. Yep, that's, those, that's, those are my balls. Thank you. Emmy walk stream. Dude, it is 18 degrees outside. My fucking hand would freeze off. Fuck this shit. You stay right there, I'm dog. We're putting on jeans. Because that's what you do in winter weather. You wear fucking jeans over the pajama pants to stay warm from the main wind. It's what you do, chat. It's what you do. Get dressed while waiting to hit the 22nd. We're multitasking. Multitasking, I say. Multitasking. All right, Rumble Jersey's coming up. I hope that's not uh, illusion shattering for everyone that I don't wear the Rumble uh, Jersey all the time. <sighs> Come on, 20 seconds. Big development. No whammies. Oh, baby. Hold on. Hold on. All right. Sweatshirt's on. Come on. Have I done it? Am I the greatest? Shitload of waiver claims. Oh, no. Because technically certain players need to be called up or they're put on waivers. It's like Ottinger, Spencer Knight. Okay. Spencer Knight. Called up to Seattle. Not on waivers. Ottinger. He can't get the boost either. Uh, Nemesnikov. He's going up. Are they still going to be... They're not still going to be counted as on waivers once I call them up, right? It's going to be fine. Jamie Drysdale. Trevor Zegra. Jack Quinn. I shouldn't be at risk here of losing these guys. Robert Master Simone. Dennis Cholosky, Luz Fellier, Kalen Addison. Honestly, putting William Carlson on waivers doesn't sound like the worst idea in the world. Thomas Bordlow. I may have thought that I 4D chest this and then blew it because Atu Ratu's on waivers and if I lose him, fuck. Uh, Marco Rossi. And then we have Pelletier. So we had to call up a decent amount of players, but everybody else, from what I can tell, is safe. From what I can tell, we're good. Everybody here is on Seattle, except for Isaac Bellabo. Everybody's there. Okay, so we should be good. Which means everybody else in this system that's in blue can get the boost, hopefully. Also, waivers are already done from the looks of it. I don't even know. I'm so confused. Let's just go continue. I'm scared. I'm actually kind of scared now. <laughs> We might have thought that we were 4D chessing this and I might have blown it. I know, Puff. I know. We're going. I didn't just put on the, the pants for no reason. You think I just put on pants for no reason? Oh god, it's simmed to like the 24th. Stop. Hammer time. Stop. Okay. I wasn't able to put anybody on waivers. Or to stop. I wasn't able to claim anybody on waivers, which is okay. I mean, because you could argue 
that like what the hell is Mad Shogard gonna do for me at this point? I mean he's four star, that would help me abuse the system. Season preview, we are now cup favorites. Alongside Pedersen, Columbus, and Detroit's up there. Sorelli as well with Washington. Scoring race is likely to be McDavid, Pedersen, McKinnon. Top defenseman Jones, Shabbat, Pareko, and top goalies Vasilevsky, Hellebuck, and Demko. I haven't even seen the developmental report. I didn't... I didn't delete the thing. Furman, I don't know what the hell you've caused at this point. Maybe because I hid the email? Because <laughs> I put on do not disturb? But it still would have gone to the box. I don't even know, man. I don't know. As far as I know, we didn't lose anybody. Off roster. Thank God. I didn't lose anybody. Our value is now, it's been gained by 26 in the transfer summary. Um, transaction log, like we're good. All we did was promote people. We didn't lose anybody. I'm gonna sim to the next day against Buffalo. And man, if, if the report still doesn't come through, then number one, we're never doing this again anyway because it was way too much goddamn work but it was at least worth double checking. Yeah, there has been nothing about the upgrade. So what did we learn tonight? That this was a gigantic waste of time, but that this team is in fact going to be sick. But yeah, we just wasted a shitload of time <laughs> to try and get an extra bit of a boost for our younger players and it very much didn't work. We will have to sort out who makes this team tomorrow. I am done for now. I don't know what the hell just happened, but I do know that I am going to bed because I just broke FHM. Go figure.